Uh, yeah, and, and, and we will talk more about the tax collectors here and why do people in those days look down on the tax collectors? Why did the people hate the tax collectors? We will say it in a moment. And at that moment, the Jesus said, follow me. And Jesus told him, and Levi got up and followed him. Yeah, yeah that is something very special. I want to talk to you a little bit about the tax collectors. Now, here is Levi, and the name of the Levi are the priests right. from the tradition yes. that they are from the line of the priesthood. And yet, these priesthood or the pastor or the leaders, now they, 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 they become the tax collectors. <laughs> Why? The people do not like tax collectors in those days, and even in today's world, and in many societies today, that people do not like it. No, in our society before, not America, I'm not going to mention that country. You know that those tax collectors, every month, they just walk in and they want to ask more. Mm -hmm. Supposedly, we have just, just pay like that, but they, they said, no, you have to pay this, pay that. And they want to do under table business. If we give them, okay, we don't give them, we give them and then they don't write. They said that I'm not going to write you the receipt. Then <laughs> we took the money. And we, we don't like them. But sometimes they are very picky. Sometimes they just come and just provoke our anger. Now, in those days, the tax collectors are considered as betrayal of the country. Mm, wow. Because the Israel Israelite was dominated by Rome, so the people was under the subject of Roman government, and here the Levi or the Bristol people, and then the Israel people or the Jewish Jewish people begin to serve the Roman authority and Roman government instead of their own people. So they were considered as the traitors. They were considered as the betrayer. They are hated by the people. They are being despised by the people. And not only that, the characters of many of those tax collectors are not very good. They always want to have more money and put into their pocket. They are rich at the expense of other people. Yes. They are wealthy at the poverty of other people. They have more money to enjoy their life at the suffering of other people. And that's why the people do not like them. They despise them, they consider them as thief, and they are the instrument of the enemies. So knowing about that background, and you we begin to see that Jesus come to talk to these people. What are the people in our society today that we consider as outcasts? Or someone that people do not want to talk talk to. Who are those people? Right. The homeless people? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe the sick people? Yeah. The poor people? Yeah. Or maybe the gangster? Or maybe the prisoner? We don't want to have anything to associate with those people. Right, right. But I have a good news for you today. <laughs> regardless of who we are, regardless of whatever we did. Jesus is still coming and he is calling you and I to come to him. Amen. He wants to talk to us. Yes. He wants to sit together with us. Amen. He wants to eat together with us. And he wants to bless every one of us. Amen. Apostle, do you have any insight Ed, before we are moving on? Yeah, you know, I, I think that, you know, we can actually look at your own life. And, and you can see, you know, like even betrayals, you know, from people, you know, maybe you've lent people money, yes. you know, and they never paid you back or, you know, Shuffle. yeah, you know, or, you know, or, or something, you know, like they, they would just say, okay, well, let me make payments. And, and so, you know, you're going to make a payment arrangement with them. And then the, when that month comes, then they don't make the payment, you know, and it's all of a sudden, oh, I didn't know that I had to pay you. You didn't tell me that you owed me money or that I had to pay you back, you know, and then it's kind of like, what? And so, you know, you can never count on man, but mm -hmm. you can always count on God. Amen. 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 That's what's so good. Those tax collectors in those days, you know, that they're just like shark loan. And many times that they give someone to borrow the money, and then after that, if you go pay with the interest, they are going to come and they took away our things, our belongings. And these, most of the people are very poor. 
Of course, sometimes they don't have anything to pay off, and maybe sometimes that their hand being chopped off, or maybe sometimes their leg was cut off, or something is happened to their family. Sometimes they took yes. away their children. Mm. And that's why the poor people really, really hate the tax collector. <laughs> yeah. Now, let me ask you, is there anyone in your life you really hate? Mm. You don't want to associate with those people? Mm. How about prophetess? Whoa, <laughs> that's a loaded question. <laughs> uh, but it, it goes the other way too. Some people don't want to associate with you because you're a Christian, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, the... Um, you know, and thank God that Jesus came to sit with the sinners, because I was the biggest sinner, <laughs> amen, and um, yeah. I was the one who needed Jesus the most, and he came and he sat with me, and he loved me up out of my mess, and, and brought me and showed me his ways, and I'm still learning, I'm still growing, yeah. and uh, you know, it's it doesn't ever stop, and I'm just so thankful that he decided to to humble himself and come from his throne and right. come down and give his life and give me a purpose and a reason for living. Amen. Amen. You know, Amen. thank you, Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. So thank you so much. All of us have the grace of God and we are the recipient of God's grace. And that's why today we can be open to many other people. Yes. And I remember my church members, some of my church members are filthy rich. They are millionaires and billionaires. <laughs> And um, I always challenge them to share the gospel, and especially to their helper at home. Yes. So uh, they, they respond, and they also share the gospel to the helpers. And then they, I said that we need to invite them to go to church together, and they really hesitate. <laughs> because they don't want to sit with the people of, from the different classes. Right, right. You mm -hmm. know, that in certain society, the hierarchy is, is still very, 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 very strong. Mm -hmm. Mm. Well, if you are living in a residential or five star, you don't want to have anything to do with the three star. Wow. <laughs> and how much more with housing stocks? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't uh, know. Yes, and, and, and they feel very uncomfortable. Mm. And especially if I ask them to invite their friends to come, and here they help us sitting together, and now they invite their friends, they will say no. Yeah. Most of the time they will say no because they are used to that culture. Their spiritual life has not been transformed. They are saved, mm. God is changing their life, but they have not reached up to the, that level mm. of humility, of humble, yes, and yes. they treat one another just like brothers and sisters. Yes, amen. They, and then in church, we have a tradition. At the end of the service, I always said that, go and look for three people, say, Jesus loves you, and we love you too. Give them a hug. Pray for them, bless them. And then some of these members talk to me personally. Say, Pastor, don't ask us to do so. I said, what, what's wrong? I, I, did, I don't even know what happened. And she said, What's wrong? That is, we show love. Yeah. Said, How can I give a hug to my helper? <laughs> like this. <laughs> yes, I, I may love them, but then. If I do like that, they would they would take for granted. They don't know. What to do. They will not listen because at home, how can I control? How can I manage the workers? Something yeah, like that. Yeah. Oh wow! So it took for them some time, but thank God, God changed their life, and later on they feel that oh, that is very normal. So <laughs> yeah. after the church service, we said that go to look for three people and say God love you and I love you too, and give them a hug, pray for them, bless them in any way. So you see that in life. Many times we think that we don't have that problems. But when we begin to, to analyze that there might be someone that we hate. Mm. There might be someone that we dislike. There might be someone that hurt us too deep that we don't want to have anything to do with him or her. There might be someone in the society that we dare not approach. Mm. Okay? Like many sick people, HIV patients, and different kind of uh, disease that can be spreading. And maybe sometimes we have the fear and we don't want to have anything to do with those people. Yeah. But just imagine, Jesus can still come and heal even the lepers. Amen. 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 And for me, that is, that is life-changing. Yes, amen. That's a life-changing experience 
that the King of King and the Lord of Lord is still coming and minister to the people that have been rejected and abandoned by the yes. society. Amen. Yes. So who we are that we're going to reject in other people? Yes. Do you have yes. any feedback or any response? You know, response? It, it just reminded me, you know, the Holy Spirit reminded me of, of the time that I w went downtown LA to the LA Mission. Yeah. You know, and there's very, a lot of homeless people, sickly people, people that are drugs and mm. alcohol. I mean, you got the worst of everyone there. And, but they, they bring the people in there in the auditorium, which sits about 300 people, and then they feed them after. So that's the reason why the people come, because they want to eat after, right? Yeah. And so the thing is, is that, you know, the Holy Spirit said, I want you to go, and you take your microphone, and with one hand you shake and, and bless every one of those people. Amen. And I went and I blessed every single one of those people. And I'm telling you, they were having their hands out before I could even come to them. Because no one ever touches them. Yeah. You know, people are afraid, oh, I'm going to get a disease yeah, or something. Geez, geez. But see, I didn't, I didn't worry about that. I just knew that God said to go bless them, and I bless them. And they were crying. They were even crying because no one shows them any love. Yeah. Yes. And the world is looking for love. You know, I was looking for love. I was looking for love in all the wrong places. Mm. And when I came to the Lord and I went to a Bible study, it was at a home. And the first thing, it wasn't what they were preaching, it wasn't what they were singing, it was the love that they were showing Amen. that caused me to want to, to keep going and keep hearing yes. God's word. Amen. It wasn't, you know, they didn't give me pretty words, they said, you know what, we love you. God loves you. And yeah. they gave me the most beautiful hug. That's it. And Amen. said, you know what, God loves you, you're going to be okay, you're going to, whatever you're going through, you're going to make it. And I got encouraged, and so it kept me going back and wanting more of God and more of Jesus, and and uh, you know, and it just kept going and going. Yeah. Amen. That is how people will know that we are the disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. by showing the action, by stretching our hand, by reaching out to the people on our right, on our left, in front, or behind us. And I remember right. that in 2014 or 15 when our team went to Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone in West Africa. Mm. At that time, they had a disease called Ebola. How many of you remember oh, that? Oh, yes. It's a very deadly virus disease. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I remember that uh, I met some of the missionaries, and then, just like you know, I just stretch my hand and just give them a handshake, and they just like this. <laughs> no, 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 they don't want to do like that. And then in the evening when we did the crusade, and we believe that God is going to heal the people, here comes the time that we have to lay hands on everybody. And, <laughs> and then the devil begins to say, no, 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 you're not going to go down. You just stand, stand up there, pray for people. God can heal anyone. <laughs> But deep inside, I know that there is a fear. Yes, yes. Yes. I know that I worry that when we go and the Ebola diseases or viruses will transfer to us and we will have the problems. <laughs> <laughs> but we just pray by faith and Amen. we pray for everyone. We lay our hand to pray for them and check with everybody, thousands of people like this. Yes, amen. Many of them get healed and even the Ebola diseases. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. And yes. we are fine. We are saved yes. by the grace of God. Hallelujah. You see that the people were so touched because they know during that time, many people do not want to come close together. Yes. They don't, do not want to come for big meeting. They don't want to handshake shaking to anybody because it could be the last day of the life. Last handshake. <laughs> it could be the last day of the life. It could happen like that. Yeah. But by God's grace, when we begin to show love, God's grace continues to extend to bring the healing upon their life. Hallelujah. And today I have three questions to you. Yeah. If you think that you are not a sick people, if you think that you are the righteous people and you mm. don't need Jesus, you don't need mm. anyone, mm. and you think that you are very good, you don't look down on other people, you don't despise on other people, mm. may I ask you, do we have a bad name? Mm. First of all, do we have a bad name? You and I may have a bad reputation. You and I may have a long negative, a long negative record. <laughs> 
You and I may be sinners, just like the, the, the Bible said. You and I may be the tax collectors. You and I may be become the traitors. You and I may be the betrayal. You and I may be the bad people. You and I may be the gangster. You and I may have different names. What are the names? Can you just tell me, <laughs> tell you, please. I was a collector. I collected for a, an attorney. So I know what that's like for people to slam the door or threaten you or, you know, they want to hurt you because you're collecting and I say, yeah, I'm just doing my Well, what job. about when you, like, terminate people? Yeah. You know, that's another thing. <laughs> other people want to come after you, and you're just doing your job. You know? Sometimes we think that we have no bad names. <laughs> but yes, ask our spouse, our children. <laughs> what would they call us? Oh. They would call us by many, many, many names. Means. You're a very mean person. <laughs> they may call that you're a corrupted person. Oh. They may call that you are a violent person. They may call that you are a person who always curse other people. They may <laughs> call you are a selfish person. They may call you a cheating person. Do you think that we don't have the bad names? <laughs> he has a lot of bad names. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a lot. I can't slip it. <laughs> Yes, amen. So do not only think that only other people have bad names. <laughs> do not think that I'm righteous, I'm always That's good, right. I'm powerful, I'm great. Yes, thank God <laughs> if you are great. <laughs> but we are all the sinner in amen. the eyes of God. Yes. We need the grace and the mercy of God. But the good news for you and I is that even though when we have a bad reputation, even though when we have a bad name, even though we are the gangster, even though we are the prisoner, even though we are someone who cheat other people, but Jesus, the Lord Jesus, is calling you and I to come to Him. Amen. Are you willing to come to Him? Amen. Bad people? Yes. I'm bad people. Mm. I can hate other people. I can shout other people easily. I may cheat other people. I may despise other people. I may look down on other people. Or maybe I don't show it by word, but in my mind, yeah. I may have hatred, mm. vengeance, mm. revenge, mm. negative thought about other people. Mm. But God is calling you and I, just like the Levi, just like the son of Alphys, just like the sinner, God is calling all of us, even though we have a bad names, but He is going to give us a good name. Amen. We have a bad name, but He's going to give us the best name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So believe that God is going to do something great in our life once again. Amen. And the second question, do we despise other people? Maybe we think that, oh, I don't despise anyone. Can you just share from your experience? <laughs> Is there any time that we despise other people? Well, I think that you know you can despise people because they they might be doing greater things than you. You know, they may have a, 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 they might live in a mansion, and so you know you think, oh, I wish I had that mansion. Why why do they have that mansion? I don't. Right. You know, and and you know, so you can despise people by the things that they have or the things that they do you know maybe they're traveling around the world and you've never left california you never really left your house you know, you, know you could despise people because of you know their their prosperity or because jealousy. of jealousy. jealousy yes amen so how about you oh yeah i've been uh, i i despised um i got teased a lot and then you know you you get resentful and you despise people for you know why are they doing that and why do they get away with that and that kind of thing but you know what the truth is that we all fall short and we get away yeah. with stuff you know I, I got away with a lot of stuff um, I deserve uh, punishment uh, and but you know what Jesus bore my punishment he bore my sins he bore my shame I, I don't have to be ashamed anymore yeah. of any wrongdoing uh, we are accountable. We are accountable to grow and mature and, and uh, come out of those things. But when you're going through it, you know, thank God for, like we talked on the earlier show about God's grace. Mm. You know, Amen. That to, to, to he covers us with his grace and he helps us to not be despising, but to be loving. Mm. That's right. That's a fruit. Amen. Those are fruits. Amen. Amen. Maybe sometime when we saw someone who is smelly, who is dirty, we may despise in our heart. Yes. Maybe something that we look at other people is that they are so crooked. 
and we despise some other people who are corrupted, we despise. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. But remember that we are maybe also despised by other people. Yes. yes. We may be also the victim who have been rejected by other people. We may be the victim who may be being abandoned by other people. We are the people who may be deserted by other people. We are the people that other look at us and they don't want to have nothing to do anything with us. But when people despise us or other being despised, the Lord Jesus, they want to sit down with us. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says. Yes. Yeah. When the people despise Levi, the son of Alphaeus, but Jesus came Amen. and sit down. Not only calm these people, but Jesus began to sit down and all of the righteous people, their eyes just opened and said, how come this teacher is sitting? Not only is he calling these people, <laughs> but he is sitting with these people. These are sinners. These are people betrayer. These are the people being despised, rejected, abandoned. And I don't know about you, but we have a good news for you. Whatever you feel, remember, Jesus wants to sit down together with you. Amen. Other men, people do not want to sit down with you because you are dirty, because you are poor, because you are low educated, because you are not beautiful, not handsome. Other people do not want to sit with you because of the social classes. People do not want to sit with you because maybe you are not able People do not want to sit together with you because you are not amount to something. But I tell you something very important. In God's eye, you are precious in His eye. Amen. You are the apples of His eye. And He is not going to despise you and I as His children. You and I are the do His daughter. You and I are His son and daughter. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why He loves us so much. Even though we may have some defect. <laughs> Even though we may have some sicknesses, even, even though we may have something rebellious, it's just like many children who are like that. But as a parent, we still love them. And we still give them the second opportunity, the third opportunity. And God is going to give us a thousand opportunities. Amen. Because He wants to sit together with us. Hallelujah. Are you willing to invite Him to come and sit together yes. with us? Not only respond to His call, but also invite Him to sit together with us. Apostle, do you want to, have, want to give some more insight? You know, I, I just look at Psalms 23. You know, it's, it's, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, and, and then it basically it says that on um, verse 5, he says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So, you know, God is like saying, okay, you know what? I want you to feast and I'm going to show you the enemies are going to walk by you and they're going to be like, you know, like so envious, like they should have forgiven. They should have been kinder. They should have been more gentle, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what God is doing. He wants you to sit at his table so that you can eat his fruit, so that you can eat his food, so that you'll never lack with anything. And that's why it says, you know, taste and see how good the Lord is. Because once you have a taste of Him, you'll never go back to your old. You'll only want more of Him. And you'll get more thirsty for reading the Word of God. So we have to encourage you that no matter who you sit with, no matter who your enemies are, forgive them, love on them. You know what? And, and just know that Jesus loves you. He loves them. You're no better than them. You know, you might be saved, but God still wants to save them too. So Amen. that's what we have to do is encourage one another. Amen. Let us have a recap before recap before I'm going to ask you the third question. And I promise. First of all, don't we have a bad names? <laughs> <laughs> so when you remember that, mm. then you begin to see how gracious is our God. He's calling you. Amen. And I, we have a bad names. Secondly, that we said, do we despise other people mm. or be despised by other people? And the third question, do we hate other people mm. or being hated by other people? And most of the time that we have someone who hates us because of something happened. Yes. Because sometimes it's not that we, just because we intentionally we do something, sometimes we unintentionally do something and people, people begin to hate us. You and I may be the cause of people anger. You and I may be the cause of all the problems. You and I may be the cause of someone's sickness. You and I may be the cause of someone's relationship being broken. You and I may be still the business of someone. You and I may be the person who hurts someone through our work. You and I may be the people who let the people die without knowing about that. Mm. 
Wow. And because of that, sometimes that people hate us. They begin to curse us mm. without even our knowing. Yeah. <laughs> and we always think that we are right, we are good, we are okay. We're happy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but is there anyone in your life and my life that we don't want to talk to? Mm. You want no one to look to? Mm. I remember one of the auntie. And one day I was preaching and she said, at the end when we pray, she all said, I cannot do that, I cannot do that. And then I, I thought, okay, the first time is okay. The second time I'm still doing the same thing. So I wonder, what does that mean? So I asked her, and she still said, I cannot do that, I cannot do that. And I asked, what is this something that you could not do? And she said, I cannot go and talk to my father. Mm. And she began to share about the story mm. for 20 years. She had never met her father. Wow. For 20 years, she had never talked to her father. And to my surprise, later on, I found out the secret. Her father's house and her house is only two meters mm. uh, apart. You know, in the countryside, the house is just next, only two meters <laughs> apart. And yet, for 20 years, they don't talk with one another. Oh my God. Whenever she saw her father in law walk this way, she would go another way. Whenever <laughs> she came here and her father, uh, sorry, her father saw her, she's coming, he would go another way. Wow. And she said, 20 years ago, something happened. She didn't tell me exactly, but very serious. And then that she said that you will never be come my father again. Mm. And then her father said, if you come back to my home, I'm going to beat you to death. Oh, wow. And just like that. Wow. And for 20 years, the children never walk and begin to talk to the grandparent. Wow. grandparent. Oh. You just imagine the hurts, the wow. pain, the agony, the shame that they have. The neighbor begin to say, oh, this daughter is not good. And how are the children? And then in the next future, the same yeah. thing will happen to her. Wow. Next generation. But thank God, she accepts Jesus. And the Holy Spirit begins to speak to her. Mm. And God's love, the fever, and God speak to her that you are going to talk and forgive your father. Yes. And she said, I cannot do that 20 years already. <laughs> uh, and if now I forgive him, I go. And if he beat me to death, so what? Uh, uh, to make the story short, we encourage her and pray for her. And she prayed. And every time she stood up and she walked, she began to walk to her father's home. And the devil said, no, 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 he's going to beat you. He's going to beat you. <laughs> Just like that many times. And we keep on pray for her, encourage her. And then one day she doesn't know what to do. But the Holy Spirit prompted her that she had to go there. Yes, amen. And she walked to in front of the door of her father's house. And there on that day, her father was sitting there. And then when she looked at her father, she doesn't know what to do. She was so nervous. <laughs> what she's going to do? And suddenly she just come and said, Daddy, I'm sorry. Aww. Just one word of Daddy, I'm sorry, she came. And the two people, she was 50 years old and her father is 70 plus mm -hmm. at that time. And the two, father and daughter, hugged and they cried to her Aww. baby. Praise God. They wow. have been set free Amen. from that. For 20 years under bondage, for 20 years of anger, for 20 years of upset, for 20 years of no freedom, for 20 years of no love, for 20 years of misunderstanding, mm. for 20 years of hate mm. and unforgiveness. Mm. And I'm asking you tonight that if you hate other people or being hated by other people, remember Jesus is still calling you. And the Lord Jesus Christ wants not only to call you, not only to sit together with you, but He wants to have dinner with you. What does that mean? He wants to celebrate together with you that today your pain is over. He wants to celebrate, even meaning to say, He wants to make a covenant with you that your hatred is over, your unforgiveness is over, your sickness is over, your Bankruptcy is over. Your problem is over because Jesus Hallelujah. is sitting together with you. Hallelujah. He's going to eat together with you. <laughs> He's you going Lord. to make a new covenant Thank with you. you. He's going to change your life Hallelujah. if you want to come to Him. Hallelujah. Prophetess. And you know, um, forgiveness, if you don't forgive, He says that I will not forgive you. And the only way for you to get into heaven, into the kingdom of God, is through Jesus who is the door. The Amen. Bible says, I'm the way, 
the truth and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. And if you're not willing to let that hostility go, I had a, I had a hostility problem and unforgiveness and bitterness and hatred and hurt because of pain that was inflicted on, on me over years and decades. Right. And but and there was a time where I couldn't even be in the same. I felt the planet was not big enough for the both of us, you know. But I said, you know what? If I want to be forgiven, I have to forgive. I have to let yeah. go. That's and right. Lord, I'm asking you right now for people that are going through that, that, that the Lord will heal you of that pain. But you have to say it with your mouth. You have to say, you know what, Lord? I'll let them go. I release that person. Say Amen. their name. I release them. I forgive them. Yeah. I choose to forgive by faith. I, I don't feel it. I still feel some anger. I still feel some pain. But you help me get through that, Lord. You you heal my hurt. Amen. And you know what? You'll find yourself at the at the road on the road to forgiveness and the road to recovery. Freedom. And the freedom and the peace. And being able Amen. to sleep at night and say, right. you know what? I have peace. I don't have to take medication to sleep. Mm. I don't That's have to right. drink to drown my sorrows anymore. Mm. Because I did have a season where I was uh, in that, you know, where drinking to you know, drown the sorrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to forget. Yeah, because it was painful, you know. So you get to the place of that peace that surpasses all understanding. But, you know, I want to, I keep hearing the words, Jesus is the door. Amen. And he wants you to come. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Amen. You know, and then he's knocking on your door right now. And Amen. trust me, he will send people. He sent a an ex house angel to me, okay, to really shake me up and say, you know what? Uh, Jesus wants you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> now, for those in a moment, Apostle Cora will pray for those who want to pray for forgiveness. Yeah. You know, this like this empty. After that, she has the freedom. She feels very joyful. Before, when her face is full of unforgiveness, she cannot be happy. Even though she comes to the Lord, she experiences the power of God, the love of God. But there is something press her down. Yeah. Sickness is pressing you down. Revenging thought is pressing you down. Heavy and laden is pressing you down. And the devil tried to use the opportunity and begin to continue to keep you under bondages. Amen. You need to be set free. That's right. And I also need to be set free. Apostle, would you just pray for those? Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I, I just ask you, Father God, that you lift those people up, Lord, that are feeling, you know, whether they have unforgiveness in their heart, Father, that you will just turn them around, Lord, that they'll be able to, to go forth and forgive those people that have hurt them, Father, and that they'll be able to bless those people that have hurt them, too. And, Lord, they'll be able to forgive themselves, Holy Spirit. I ask you, Lord, that you just pour your heavenly oil on them right now Amen. so that when any words come against them, Father God, that it'll slide right on off, Lord, and that yes. they will forgive immediately, Father, because they know that the enemy is just trying to put chains on them, but you are here to give us freedom. So, Amen. Father God, it says in Matthew 6, 14, and 15, Lord, it says, forgive those who forgive, forgive those who have hurt you, as your Father will forgive you. And if you don't forgive those who don't forgive um, others, then, you're, then God will not forgive you. So read the scripture in Matthew 6, 14 and 15. Know it by heart that God loves you so much that he's here to bless you and help you and to get you through this because from, from forgiveness, he wants to bring you a favor. And that's what it is. He wants to take you from the pit to the palace. So in Jesus' name we pray. Lord, do your mighty way and work within the people. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Last question for you. Do we need the Lord Jesus as our doctor? Mm. Do we recognize that we are sinners? Some of you may say that, oh, I'm a good man. I never cheat anybody. I do all the good things. Really? <laughs> is it thinking back about other people, is that a sin? Mm. Stealing is not a sin. Mm. That is the intention of our heart. Abortion is not a sin. Taking advantages of other people is not a sin. Cursing other people is not a sin. Mm. Many times that we think that we are so good, but we do not recognize that we are full of sicknesses. Many times we do not know that we are unworthy before God. Many times you and I do not know that we need the salvation of the Lord to save our life. And many of you 
When you open your mouth, you always talk about the dirty word, about the curses, and you don't even know why it's that. Many times, we're just very hot temper, and you don't know where does it come from. <laughs> just make it an example. When we have some sick virus in our body, it makes us heavy. Mm, yeah. It makes us not healthy. Yes. And sometimes it gives us a headache, the fever, and we aren't willing to eat, and it's, it begins to deteriorate our health. Yes. Sin is just like that bad viruses in our life. And because of sin, you begin to curse. Because of sin, you become so hot tempered. Because of sin, you always want to steal. You always want to have unfaithful relationship. And you do all the things and drinking, smoking, drug addition, addition, and other things. And we need the freedom from God today. We need the deliverance, deliverance from God today. We do not know that we are desolate and pitiful. The Bible will tell us. Man born of woman is a few days and a full of troubles. In other words, the Bible will tell us that we are very beautiful without God. Mm, yeah. I, I, I can tell you a lot of things. A lot of things okay? <laughs> I have a lot of things. But let me tell you like this. The Bible said in Jeremiah chapter 13, 23, said, Can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard is spot? What does the Bible want to say? Sin is there in your life. And even though we try our best, it's good. But we cannot get rid of it. We need the grace of God. Sin is in our nature. And in order for us to be cleansed, we need the mercy and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 51 verse 5 said, Surely I was sinful at birth, Sinful from my mother conceived me. I say it again. Psalm 51, 51 verse 5 said, If you think that you have no sin, surely I was sinful at birth. Sinful from the time my mother conceived me. From our thought, our behavior, our feeling. It's all inclined for the evil, for wickedness. Mm. And I can tell you many things. The proverb in Proverbs chapter 20 20 verse 9 said, Who can say, I have kept my pure heart? Am I clean and without <laughs> sin? That's the struggle of all the moralists, all the great people. They struggle. Said, can I keep a pure heart? No. The answer, can I keep a clean heart? No. Can I live a life without sin? No. The answer, there is no one who does not sin. All of us only need fall short of the glory of God. Yes. And in closing, let me share with you a story about Confucius. Many of us know Confucius is a very famous moralist. And everybody knows that he's good. And everybody wants to learn from him. Everybody praised him in those days, that he's a good man. But one day, he was thinking about himself. He said, people said that I'm very good. But actually, I didn't. I, I didn't do so. <laughs> and then he, he wanted to do an experiment. And what he did, an experiment, experiment is he get the white bean and the black beans. Okay? And he put in the two bottles. And he said, every day, whatever I do, the good things, think good, do good, whatever the good thing, I will put one white bean. And if I do something, I act upset, anger, think back about other people, take advantage of whatever, I will put a black bean. And what, do you, what does he find every day? Can you guess? <laughs> he said, people said, I'm a moralist. I'm good. I'm a good person. But every day I see the black beans are more than the white beans. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why I like black beans so many? Oh, so yes. Many. <laughs> yes, even though we don't like the black beans. But actually, it is the reality of our life. Out of our heart that come from the evil thought. The Bible said Matthew chapter 15 verse 19. For out of the heart come evil thought, murders, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander, you name it. The heart is more deceitful than all else and is desperately sick. Who can understand it? 
James chapter 1 verse 13 said, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. It's the yes. evil desire inside of us. We want to commit sin. We want to uh, against God. We don't want to rebellious against God. We don't want to listen to the righteous thing. We don't want to listen to the godly thing because it hurts us. Yeah. But actually, that's what we, we, we think. It's not going to hurt us. Yes, maybe it's hurt at the beginning. Yes. But it's going to set us free. And Levi, the son of Alphys, he was set free from his con being condemned. He was set free from being under bondage. He was set free from being looked down at by other people. Because he know that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is coming to him. He's calling him. He's sitting down together with him. He's inviting him to celebrate together with him. To write down a covenant with him. And to say that he is free indeed. Hallelujah. And this can also happen to us and to you as well. Amen. Just like it have happened to millions of us and today it could and it can and it will happen to you if you want to come Hallelujah. to the Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, we'd like to invite you to come and experience miracles in every moment, in every matter of our life. And if you want to come to join us at the Vision TV, we'd like to invite you to come and share the story together. And if you are looking for the church service on Friday night, we have the Revival Healing Night in Chinatown, Los Angeles, and London Road, Westminster Revival Night every Friday night. So you can come here in Garden Grove at the address of 12522 Brooker Street, Garden Grove, California. Amen. If you want, you you nearby in Chinatown, uh, Los Angeles, so you can look the address at 220 East Avenue 28, Los Angeles, California. So if you want to look for a church on Sunday, you can also go for the midweek service. Uh, in the morning here at Gannon Grove and 2.30 p.m. English service here at the Gannon Grove, the same as address 12522 Brooker Street, Gannon Grove, California. And if you are looking for um, English and Mandarin service in the morning of Sunday at 11 o'clock, we'll be in Chinatown once again, 222 East Avenue, 28th Street, uh, Los Angeles, California. And if you are free on Sunday night, we invite you to go to Rose Meet at the address 9. 032 East Mission Drive, Rosemead, California at 7 o'clock. <laughs> so you can come and join together in many other places. Amen. And would you please just come to the Lord right now and we ask prophetess, would you please just pray for the people and dedicate the people into the hand of God and Amen. receive your miracles now. Amen. Okay, so Heavenly Father, I just lift up uh, the listeners, Father, those that want to receive you as their savior for the first time Amen. and for those that want to rededicate their lives lord that they'll you just draw them in with your spirit father god Amen. cover them with your blood i keep hearing the blood will never lose its power and that's what god is saying to you tonight the blood has not lost oh, its power Hallelujah. there's no sin too great and there's no depth too deep that he cannot reach you. Hallelujah. and he's willing to reach out to you right now yes. and just say lord Help me, okay? He's there to answer you and call unto him and he will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know yeah. not of. And he wants you to come and fellowship so you can get stronger with him. So you can have a, a good relationship, a yes. good working yeah. prayer Hallelujah. life. Uh, he wants to answer your prayers. You've said, I, I don't know how to get my, answers, my uh, prayers answered. But he's saying, I want to answer your prayers. I want to fulfill what you have need of. I'm here to meet you. you. Just come unto me, he's saying that tonight. So Father, we thank you for that yes, in the Lord. name of Jesus, that He's uh, you're reaching out to the people, you're touching their, their uh, areas that they need healing and where they need deliverance, Father God, where they need a financial miracle. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and agree. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you so much. Welcome once again to uh, miracles again with Reverend Dr. Ho Yan together with, uh, with Apostle Cora Lanford and God bless <laughs> and see you. Contact us at telephone number 714-717-5663 and I'm going to preach tomorrow in Los Angeles and roast me so you want to come and join us together, <laughs> you're most welcome. Amen. God bless and Good see night. you. Good night.